Hey guys, in the last video we talked about using Joomla and we're kind of going to skip around and tonight we're going to look at setting up a Sunfire X 4100 M2. We're going to take it all the way from unboxing it to installing VMware on it, upgrading VMware, and putting it into a production environment. We're also going to look at installing solid state drives and network storage that's on a SAN. So first thing I'm going to do is unbox the server and I'll turn the camera back on. Alright, so I fast forward a little bit and now we have the server unboxed. As you can tell, the box it was in, it was a Dell box and it's a used Sun server. Uh, this server I got it on eBay for about 140 bucks and 45 bucks shipping. It's a dual quad-core 2.7 gigahertz AMD processor with 32 gigabytes of DDR2 RAM. So the first thing I like to do with these used servers is open up the front access panel here and take it off and then I like to use Lysol wipes to clean off any surface dirt that might be on the device and then also like to open up the front fan cover take the fans out individually clean them um, put them back in clean off the front here and this one that I purchased it came with four 72 gig hard drives we're actually going to take two of these out and one is going to be replaced with a solid state drive that we'll install here in a few minutes so I just like to clean up the server take the power supplies out using the tabs here and get it ready for turning on. So I'm going to pause the video and clean this up and we'll get back to it. Alright, so we got the server all cleaned out and that consisted of taking the back panel off and just wiping down the interior components and we also took off the fan cover, took out the power supplies, took out the hard drives, cleaned those, uh, wiped the server all the way around with the disinfecting wipes. Now we're going to go outside and actually rack mount the server all right, so now we're back out here in the data center and I've got the solid state drive. It's a Toshiba 240 gig drive. We're going to install it into the server and we're also going to put the rack mount rails on the side of the server. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is take out the two hard drives here. We're going to leave drive zero and one in place, taking out two and three. We're going to press the release button, pull the drive out, and then we're going to pull the other drive out Next, we're going to install a solid state drive and we're going to press the release button to open the tab. Then we're going to put the drive in the first available slot. And then I've got a slot cover that we're going to put in the empty one and then we're going to rack mount it. All right, we're going to put the slot cover in the same way or the drive filler. And sometimes these are a little difficult to get in, you have to push them. And I've also noticed if you push the metal tabs on the side, sometimes that'll help you get the drive in easier. All right, so that's locked in place. The next thing we're gonna do is put the inner rails on and you're gonna put it with the green tab facing you. On the side of the server, we're going to, I'm gonna move the camera so you can see the side of it. There's three notches on the side and those are what holds the inner rails to the outer rails of the server rack and you're going to fit the rail holes into the bigger hole on all three press it firmly against and then pull forward that locks the rails into place and we're going to do the same thing on the other side all right so now we're ready to mount the server in the rack. Alright, so now we're ready to rack mount the server in this available one use slot. And if you notice I've got a UPS setting here, we're going to move it off after I get the rack started. So the first thing you want to do is line up the edge of the rails. And then the, we'll simply slide in. And then once you get the server out about this far, it's going to lock into place. There's two tabs, one on each side. When you press the screen lever and push the server, it will go forward. So 
currently pressing the server up against the rack. You can hear it click and lock into place. So we now have our server mounted. Next we're going to go around back and install the cabling. Alright, so now we're on the back of the server. And I already have three network cables laying here. One is for the management port that goes right here on the server. It is next to, well it's up above the USB ports on the back. And then we also have two other cables. One that goes into a redundant switch for the network traffic and that's going to be carrying our SAN traffic or production network traffic. So we're going to go ahead and plug them in to net zero, net one, and then we're also going to plug it into the management port. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is plug in two power cables, one each, to different UPSs for redundant power. Alright, so we have our power ready to go. We're going to plug it in the back. The next thing we're going to do is look for a DHCP address that's been handed out to the server. That way we can manage it over the local network. Alright, so I've remoted into our domain controller that's also the DHCP server. And I found the lease. And it's the Sun SP, this one here. So that's the Sun and then the MAC address and then your local domain. So it's the IP address and when it expires. Next, I'm going to go to the portal login, which is the web address 10 250 That'll vary depending on the DHCP address your server received. Alright, so the default login is root and change me in all lowercase. And I'm not going to tell it to save the password. And you'll notice that we're on software 2025. Looks like we're going to also be doing a quick video on how to upgrade the firmware. So the next thing we're going to do is go back inside and we're going to connect into the server. Alright, so the next thing I'd like to do is change the password by going to user manager. Click on the root user, click edit. Check the box that says change. Type your new password. And click save. Next we'll click remote control. And you can look at remote power control to see if it's turned on or off. Currently it's turned off. The redirection tabs are going to allow you to open up the KMS to view the screen. And if you don't have Java installed, you need to install Java 5.0 or later. Fast forwarding a few minutes, we're at the installation wizard. Press enter to continue. Hit F11 to accept and continue the license. The wizard will search for available disk and it comes back with the ATA drive, the Toshiba, the solid state we put in. We don't want to install it on it. We want to install it on the LSI logic, the RAID that we created. Enter to continue. We want English and you're going to set up your new password. Press enter. It's going to take a few minutes and then you'll see the installation proceed. Alright, so it's warning us that the disk will be repartitioned. Hit F11 to continue. And then ESXi 510 will install. So I'm going to pause the video until that gets finished and we'll come back. Alright, so now we're prompted to reboot the server. We're going to go ahead and press enter. It's going to reboot. Um, and also, if you notice, it said that we need to eject the CD. So we're going to click on Devices and check the CD-ROM image. This will stop CD-ROM redirection. So it's going to take just a minute for the server to reboot. Alright, so the server is booting back and VMware is loading from the installation that we just completed. So it's going to take a few minutes for it to boot up and I'm going to pause it until it's ready.
Alright, so now the installation is complete and we're back here at the main screen. We're going to go ahead and press F2 and you're going to enter the password that you typed earlier in the setup. So the first thing I like to do is turn off IPv6 and I'll do that after we assign the static IP. Remember earlier when we connected the network ports we were using two uh, different switches for redundancy. So I'm going to choose this other VMNIC1, press enter to accept and then we're going to go into the IP configuration and I'm going to set a static IP address on it. I'm going to turn IPv6 off by pressing the spacebar, then press OK. DNS server picked up through DHCP. We're going to press Escape. It's going to ask us to restart the management network. I'm going to tell it Y for yes. And the server is actually going to reboot again. Alright, so we successfully set it up. We have the static IP assigned. I'm going to go ahead and close out here. And we're going to browse to the IP address of that server. Click continue on the security warning. And you can download the vSphere client here. And I've already got it installed, I believe. I don't. So we're actually going to download it and it says it's going to take a few minutes here to complete.